see guys uh, today's session is tds so i will give you overall idea what is tds then uh, uh, so we will go to uh, configuration areas see generally so we have tds is called uh, withholding tax see withholding tax means withholding tax see in india withholding tax is called as a tds in india withholding tax is called as tds tds means the tax deduction at source tds means tax deduction at source source means specific income source means specific income so tds is applied TDS is applied only source of income, source of income of the company. Only specific source, not all income. Okay, only specific source. TDS is one kind of uh, advanced tax. Okay. So withholding tax is called as a TDS. TDS means tax reduction at source. Um, it is uh, imposed on specific income. So specific income, what is specific income and all? I will tell you in the coming uh, com uh, coming minutes, two minutes, three minutes. So TDS means kind of advanced tax. It is one kind of uh, advanced tax. So withholding tax is called as a TDS. TDS means tax direction at source. And it is imposed on specific income. TDS applied only source of income. Okay, so specific source of income. So just to understand that as a FSEO consultant, so you should know what are the specific incomes that uh, we need to impose TDS. Okay, so you can connect to your client first and ask what are the sessions. So many sessions are there, TDS on salary, so TDS on rent, TDS on commission, TDS on contracts, TDS on rent on building, TDS on rent on machinery. So many things are there. Okay, so if you look out the um, sessions, Yes, sessions, rates. So TDS sessions and rates. So here you can see 194 session for salary, 192 for ABF electronic premature withdrawal, 193 for interest on government, 194 dividend. So so many sessions will be there. Only contractors 194 C. Okay, insurance on commission 194 D. Maturity 194D, payment on payment on under. This is all so many sessions are there. Okay, so many sessions are there. Threshold limits also there. Threshold limits also there. So up to 2 lakh 50 thousand, there, there is no tax on salary. So threshold limit means so below this income, so no tax. Okay, if <coughs> premature withdrawal is above 50 thousand, so you have withdrawn a PF, it's above 50 thousand, 10 percent should be applicable. Okay, interest on government securities. If it is a, you are getting interest on government securities, invested on government securities, some amount. So if you are drawing that amount, so it's 10,000 below, there is no tax. About 10% will be applicable. So like that, this is the threshold limit. And these are the sessions. So as a FICO consultant, you should understand. Okay. You can see your screen. Yeah, I shared my screen, okay? So just uh, leave from the group and join again. Okay, as a FICO consultant, you should understand uh, which TDS should be applicable to your company. Okay. As a FICO consultant, you should understand which TDS is applicable to your company. Now that uh, you need to gather first. And what are the sessions? And what are the threshold limit? And what is the TDS rates? These are all things you should have first. So without knowing this, without knowing this, so we cannot implement anything. So as a functional requirement, functional consultant is, as a functional consultant, first you need to set up meeting and ask the client, so tell me what are the sessions that the, uh, your company uh, need to pay TDS to the government. So uh, what is 192 session? What is 192 day? So tell me the sessions and the 
threshold limits and TDS rates. So these three factors you need to gather from the client in the first initial phase. And what are the GLs are required? Okay, for uh, you know once uh, what is the what is the entry for TDS? That is also important. The interview perspective entries are very important. Let's say if you are in support project, so entries are very important. Yes, entries, journal entries. See, this is the journal entries. Okay. See, this is the scenario. So, a professional fee paid X Y associate chartered accountants will provide professional, uh, professional, uh, what services to the client. Okay. So, they they have charged twenty five thousand for giving professional service to the client. Okay. Here, professional services. Uh, maximum limit is 30,000 threshold limit, but it is 25,000. No TDS is applicable. Okay, that is the reason TDS is not applicable. So in this case, what is the entry professional charge account data to Mr. X5 Associate Private Limited? Okay, so this is the thing. At the time of payment, Mr. X, Mr. Associate account data to bank account. Okay, these are all things you know very well. And now let's say, for example, if a professional fee is above 30,000, then your tax should be applicable. Okay. So TDS should be applicable. In that case, at the invoice time, what is the entry? So TDS is applicable invoice and payment also. So vendor invoice, vendor payment. Customer invoice, customer payment also. So TDS is applicable to vendor invoice, vendor payment. Customer invoice, customer payment. Okay. So at the time of payment, this is the entry. See here, so TDS is 10% applicable. In that case, what is the entry? TDS is up to 10%. What is the entry? So TDS payable account. This GL account you need to create. See, let's say your client has a three sessions are applicable. Then you need to create uh, these three GL accounts in the current liability column. Okay. So you need to create uh, three GL accounts in the current liability column. Okay. So at the time of uh, payment, uh, what is the entry? This is the entry. So so these are all entries are very important for the real time also. OK, so first you should understand that what is the TDS rates? OK, and how many sessions are applicable? OK, what is the journal entry? After posting the TDS, what is the entry will come up? And at the time of payment, what is the entry? So these are all things you should have uh, before discussion with the client. So let's say tomorrow is a discussion call with the client regarding the TDS. So majorly what you have to do. So first thing, first thing is first to prepare well. So prepare well under how many GL accounts are required. How many TDS sessions are applicable? OK, tell me uh, what are the TDS sessions are applicable? And uh, what is the threshold limits for those uh, sessions? And uh, what is the TDS rates and all? So these are all major things. Uh, and that you need to gather and some case exemptions also there. See exemption list uh, for uh, some of the companies exemption limit also there. Exemptions exemption means there is no TDS applicable. So that case there is any exemption certificate or any exemption document and which vendor has exemption. So those are all important factors uh, that we need to consider. Before doing this activity. OK, so TDS. Um, the concept TDS is a very uh, easier, but uh, many things that we need to do in the configuration. Many uh, see here we need to generate the TDS Chalana also. Okay, so how to do and all. So I will tell you. So first thing is just I'm opening the document. Okay, first thing is what is the client requirement? How we can do it? Uh, see, this is the client requirement as is information. So as is information means. So first, how many sessions are applicable? OK, sessions and how many GLs are required? These are all questions you should have. This requirement. Sessions applicable, GLs requirement. Next, what is the next one? And the show limit. The limit. What is that? What is the next one? What are the sessions are applicable? What is the threshold limit? Next, exemption percentage, right? Sessions are called in SAP 
withholding tax keys. Withholding tax keys. Okay, so that configuration need to know, we need to do. GLs, we know FS00 how to create. So threshold limit. Percentage means withholding tax course. Percentage means withholding tax course. So there are two parties will be involved. One is vendor and second one customer. So recipient types. CPN type should be company or other than company or HGF. Anything. So this configuration is called recipient type configuration. And in real time, so nowadays we are ex we are using extended withholding tax. So extended withholding tax activation. So extended withholding tax activation is very important. So withholding tax is applicable to invoice. Okay, withholding tax applicable to invoice and so the same withholding tax applicable to payment also for this configuration also we need to do and withholding tax business place that and session course and session course and uh, withholding tax need to deposit government TDS Salana Salana need to create. These are our major configurations uh, and uh, say let's say withholding tax is applicable once you update the withholding tax information, withholding tax information in Vendor Master. Okay. So once you apply, see withholding tax is applicable, once you update the same in the Vendor Master, then withholding tax will be applicable. These are all configurations, okay. So without, uh, no, without, uh, I, without go, without looking into SAP also we can uh, uh, giving configuration list. Okay, sessions are called withholding tax case. You need to do that creation of withholding tax case, GL requirement, uh, so limit, threshold limit, percentages, withholding tax course, recipient types in company other than company HF. We need to activate extended withholding tax. So withholding tax is applicable to invoice, withholding tax applicable to payment, and we need to know business place and session codes and TDS Chalanas and withholding tax information and our master. We need to update withholding tax information and our master. These are all configuration need to perform in real time. Okay. Now, so in real time, so we need to follow extended withholding tax. Okay. Extended withholding tax we need to do. There are two types of withholding tax are there. Classic withholding, extended. Classic means old. Extend means new. Okay, so classic means old and extended means new. So here, this is classic old. This is extended new. Okay. So what is the country specific requirements in India? Withholding tax is called as TDS, but in other, some other countries it should be called as different one. Okay. So Asia, you can see India. So India, Philippines, South Korea, Thailand. Okay, so India, uh, Philippines, South Korea, Thailand. So it is Asia, comes under the Asia. Okay, Europe and Africa, United Kingdom, Slovakia, Turkey. America, American countries, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Venezuela. For all these countries, the country specific requirement is different. In India, the withholding tax requirement is different. And uh, USA, the requirement is different. Europe, the extended withholding tax concept is completely different. So according to the client requirement, according to the country requirement, so first we need to understand which country we are perform this withholding tax. Those country legal details you should aware. Those countries tax details you should aware. So without knowing those things, so you cannot do these configurations. Okay. So first understand the client business requirement first, user side business requirement and the country specific requirements. So India, it is called as a TDS. So we know what is sessions and all. But in other countries, the concept is completely different. So for European countries, so you just uh, Google it and check it out. Uh, for Argentina, how the TDS should be calculated. You need to read out this, uh, read out that uh, points before uh, implementing any TDS content concept for withholding. Uh, sorry, withholding tax concept for Argentina. So let's say you are, uh, you need to implement for Brazil, uh, Brazil country, Brazil. Brazil country, then uh, so you should know what is the TDS and what are the sessions and uh, how the uh, withholding tax should be calculated or not. 
So those things we should have heard. And uh, see, withholding tax some, for some countries, there's an indirect tax. In India, withholding tax is a direct tax. But in some countries, uh, withholding tax is called as indirect tax. Okay. See, there are two types of withholding tax functionalities we have. One is a classic withholding tax functionality and second one is extended withholding tax functionality. Okay, so classic withholding tax functionality means it's a old one. So this is the latest one. So in our case in India, we need to follow extended withholding tax only. So classic withholding tax we are not following. Okay, some other countries may follow this classic withholding tax. For Indian context, we are not following a um, the class with we are following only extended withholding tax. So withholding tax on ongoing payment. Okay, extended withholding tax. This option, this field, this is class withholding tax and this is field. This field is available in class withholding tax and extended withholding tax. So TDS on income. So see, generally uh, earlier TDS is not applicable to incoming payments. That is the reason here this option was not there. But nowadays it is applicable. This option is there. According to the government requirement and changes, sir, we need to update our system. OK, so earlier it was not there. Now it is there. So earlier means classy withholding tax was implemented. Now means extended withholding tax is there. Whatever the functionality in the classy withholding tax, same will be there in extended withholding tax. But whatever the fields are there in the extended withholding tax, it should not be in classy withholding tax. In the latest one, it is a old one. OK. So some of the TDS at the time of invoice, this was not there. This field is not there, but the action withholding tax, it was there. At the time of partial payment, this was not there. Now it is there. So in interview perspective, so real time, so the interview will try to ask you what are the uh, major differences uh, for class C withholding tax and extended withholding tax. So you can say this stuff. If you are not explaining this stuff, that means uh, so you are losing one opportunity. So in interview for support projects, many cases, so they will ask you general 